Hey, Billy from Permapastures Farm, and today we're going to talk about guilds. Now, a number of times you've heard me in these videos talk about synergy or synergistic, basically working together. That's another way of saying it. View it like the fingers of your hand. Everything wor works in concert with one another. That's exactly how we grow our trees. That's exactly how we grow everything in a permaculture system. There's nothing in a vacuum. So today, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Guilds, synergy, elegance. For me, they all mean pretty much the same thing. So in this case, we're going to start with, let's, let's say, a simple tree. In this case, an apple tree. Not sure what cultivar, but let's just call it an apple, okay? Um, we're going to add everything within the influence of this apple. And maybe this apple can influence as well. We're going to have things within reach of it, where these guys work like the fingers of a hand. For example, in this particular guild, and it's not yet complete, we have this apple tree, and um, we could, we, we're growing nitrogen fixtures up there in the greenhouse, but we could, in the same hole, add a nitrogen fixer, which in the past we have used mimosa. And what's going to happen, that mimosa takes atmospheric nitrogen, puts it down in the soil, the roots intertwine, and then all we do is from time to time, we will coppice or pollard the uh, nitrogen fixer down to the ground. The roots will self prune. And then the, still the, it's just putting more biomass in the soil. This apple benefits. So what other allies do we have here? Right here in front of me, this is lavender. Um, let's say over here, which you can barely see right now, this is rosemary. Over here we have a little bit of sage, and then right back here is oregano. But what you don't see in this whole mix is an entire kaleidoscope of things that are beneath the soil that haven't yet come up yet. For example, flanked on every single productive tree, we have comfrey. Now, if you've ever seen our last place, the one we had in Texas, we have no shortage of comfrey. In fact, I don't think we can grow enough because our sheep eat it, pigs can eat it, the chickens eat it. I mean, all the benefits of comfrey will absolutely blow your mind. And uh, I want to give a shout out there to Coast Comfrey here in North Carolina, who, um, you know, we did business with a guy and he was cool enough to send extra because it took longer than he thought it would. So, hey, do business with that guy. He sets things right. Anyway, flanked on each tree, we have comfrey. So there's one here, or actually, let me stand back. There's actually one here and then one on the other side. They're flanked. So what's going to happen with the comfrey and with the nitrogen fixer that's in this hole is every once in a while, we're gonna come back and we're gonna coppice everything and we're gonna use it as a mulch layer, potentially, down on this tree. Or we may actually feed it to our chickens. We may feed it to the uh, sheep. Um, there are so many benefits in there that they're just too innumerable to, to put them all out right now. Now, in addition to the comfrey that's flanked on each side, we also have a blueberry here and then another blueberry, which is a different cultivar altogether from there. I think there's like maybe 10 different types that we have among these 40 productive trees right here. Now flanked from those guys are also gonna be nitrogen. These are shrubs, blueberries are shrubs. Flanked on opposite sides, let's say the blueberries are facing this way. Flanking the other way is going to be a Siberian pea shrub on this side. And then there's another nitrogen fixing shrub that we have in the greenhouse as well that will also flank it. Now, what do they do? Not only are they adding more nitrogen to the soil and also for the benefit of this tree, we can also get a harvest out of some of these things. Also, we can use it as fodder and feed for our animals. Okay, in addition to all the things I just described, in the, you, you, you may be thinking, okay, well, there's some, there's some lean spots in here. You know, you didn't cover everything. Well, no, we didn't, and there's a reason for that. Okay, in addition to everything else I've described here, we have from Peaceful Valley, a really good place where we get a lot of our seeds, is uh, what they have, the, it's called the Good Bug Blend, and we'll watch this little piece of what's in that. So if you can get a closer look at this, we just basically put it in this little Tupperware container, and it's got it all mixed in there. Now, this is another layer of protection. Remember, it's called the Good bug blend for a reason because it's insectary and it's going to bring in all of our allies it's going to bring in the bees it's going to bring all in 
and all the beneficial bugs, wherever you have a nitrogen fixer, it inherently brings in a number of the beneficial insects that are going to act as a barrier, as a minefield, if you will, against this tree. So we have numerous barriers, okay? So right now, I'm gonna do nothing more than, and you don't need much. I'm just gonna sprinkle this stuff around the edges. Now, when we had swales, when we did this stuff in swales, we put it in the swale everywhere between trees, we would put a ton of this stuff. Now, like I said, you got a ton of nitrogen fixers in there. You have a bunch of other things that are gonna bring all the beneficial bugs we want right here in this particular area. And now they have different versions of it. In this particular version, I have, I have some of it written down here. There's essentially six types of clover, coriander, dill, carrots, baby's breath, carrot, yarrow, it's highly beneficial for the sheep out there. Um, fennel, parsley, caraway, and a numerous of numerous other things. Okay, so let's talk about this whole process because undoubtedly there are those out there that have questions like, hey, where exactly do I start? Okay, so we plant all of our trees in accordance with um, with Stefan Sapkowiak. Um, if you haven't seen this documentary, the Permaculture Orchard, it is fantastic. There's also a number of imp a number of other influences out there. Everybody from Elaine Ingham, Mark Shepard, Bill Mullison, obviously, and of course, Jeff Lawton. And I'm probably leaving a number of others out. So we use an amalgamation of all these different techniques and we absorb what we think is useful and what works for us. So let's talk about these. Let's talk about what happened with the soil here. So we dug a hole by hand. Do not use an auger. So dig your hole. We got our bare root tree in there and it's far better to go with a bare root. Okay, so we laid down the cardboard. You could put a manure layer down below the cardboard, but we put down the cardboard. On top of it, we had some bomb mushroom compost we got from this place down the road here. That went down next. And then it's mulch still technically, but it's mostly the way there to becoming compost. And that's the stuff we've described before that we get from the pigs. That's what's on top. And so every time we plant something, we just kind of dig out a little bit of a hole, you know, put put some soil in there and then bam, we plant right into it. And that's how we've been going about this the whole way. All right, there you have it in a nutshell. Um, not rocket science, not tough, not impossible, but just remember there is nothing in nature that happens in a vacuum. We don't just put a tree out there and mulch it and have a nice day. We give it allies. We give it all the things it's gonna to need to become a wonderful tree. But you also have to remember that there are gonna be some that just don't work out in your soil. So. Like I said, absorb what's useful. Take what we've given you. Look up some of the other people I've talked about. You may find a better way that works better for you, has better circumstances. Till next time, this is Billy, the Permaculture Pimp Daddy from Permapastures Farm. We'll see you.